Thank you so much for being here. I always appreciate everyone listening to my podcast. Episode 29 is my first guest. Her name is Raquel Borzos. She comes from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and she is a medium psychic. She has spent many years with this gift and understanding this gift, and I thought it would be really cool to have somebody come on and share information about the gifts that we possess that we don't learn in school. So in this episode, we talk about curses and hexes, which is quite common these days to be sliding up in people's comments from individuals saying that they can alleviate them of finances or relationships or whatever it may be. I want to educate people on what's actually happening with that or one perspective of it. We're going to have a conversation around intimacy between the physical and the spiritual world, which is a real thing. So it was interesting to learn that this can happen and how this happened. We're going to have a conversation about gender identity because this is a big thing happening in the world but interestingly enough there's people in the spiritual world that identify as non-binary as well but the conversation surrounding this is a perspective that is not being shared throughout media so there might be a lot of benefits in here for people that have this in their life because there's a lot of youth these days that are experiencing gender curiosity we're going to talk about how to communicate with spirits because some people have the gifts, they just don't know how to use them. So recognizing and identifying ways that you will be able to communicate with things that you cannot see is a really beautiful thing. And these are just cool conversations. I mean, this podcast is surrounded by things that I love and just bringing in awareness to something more in life. I want people to know that there are things happening outside of society's structures and it's really cool once we tap into it. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for being here. Today is a big day. It's episode 29, but we have the first guest. It is my friend from Winnipeg. Her name is Raquel Borzos. And we met a few years, actually six weeks when I got out of jail. Raquel and I lived in the same apartment complex in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I was very grateful to have found that place, but then also have found Raquel. Because Raquel has a beautiful connection to energy and a beautiful connection to be able to communicate with spirits. And I, th I think that translates as a medium? Yes. Am I yeah, correct? Would. Okay. And I think it's important for people to note in this conversation that we have today, if you have any feelings that you're guided or that there's something behind you that tells you to do things and you're not sure how to connect with that, this episode may be for you. Because there's many youth these days that have these abilities. Usually we come into them when we're younger but we dismiss them so much in our lives that we don't pay attention to them. And I think it's important for people to know there's individuals out here that have information to help you grow these gifts. So Raquel is extremely authentic, which I think is the most beautiful thing that I, I love about her. Authenticity is the, the greatest gift that you can possess because you're just yourself and, and she definitely brings that to the table. So super grateful to see you today and have you here. Yeah, same to you. My first question is, where did the ability begin? How did your connection with being able to communicate or read energy, like where did it all start? This was actually a gift that was passed on to me genetically. Okay. It's common if your great grandmother or your mother or your father was a psychic medium, your abilities do get passed on. Now, it's not to say that everyone doesn't have abilities. Everyone does. It's just you have to develop that skill to evolve them, right? But you can have it more enhanced when you're younger, when it's passed on genetically. So mine was actually passed on just to my grandmother. She had paranormal experiences when she was young. Actually, when she moved into the north end of Winnipeg, when my grandfather left the home, my grandmother actually heard her bedroom door knock. And when she went to answer her bedroom door, there was a spirit of a blonde man wearing casual clothes saying, get out of my home. And that was the first alarming experience that she's had with the paranormal. But it was so intense because not a lot of people actually see a full body apparition like that. It's actually very rare to see a full spirit like that. Most people see them as orbs or more milder, but not to the point where it almost looks real. I've never actually heard one being described with color, like to be able yeah. to see the color of the hair as well. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. So my grandmother definitely had these very strong abilities because uh, that actually wasn't the first one I forgot uh, prior to that. Now, there was obviously some sort of issues going on in the household. 
uh, back in the days because my grandmother never opened up about this. But when she was a little kid, her father passed away. And when she was above the stairs and going up to the attic, she saw a shadow figure and she always associated that with her dad, which I thought was very interesting. And then the spirit approached her and pushed her off the stairs and she actually cracked open her skull and she had to get taken to the hospital immediately or she would have passed away but she obviously survived that uh, but it was just very strange that she associated that with her dad even the exchange of physical energy from yeah. the spiritual realm to be able to incur that much energy to force her over that's incredible where does strength like that come from on the spiritual side so it requires quite a bit of intelligence from the spirit. The spirit that pushed her off the stairs was obviously very passionate about his anger, his kind of violence. And so he learned how to use that force. Now, not every spirit knows how to do that because most of the spirits I encounter are just, you know, <laughs> wholesome old people who are just like, hey, Raquel, how's it going? And, and so they're not going to learn how to use force on someone. So not every spirit knows those things. And not every spirit is a poltergeist either. Just because a spirit is in your home doesn't mean that things are going to start flying off the shelves and cabinet doors are going to start opening. It's something that you have to learn how to do. And sometimes it's just the type of spirit that has those abilities. So what advice would you give for someone who, let's say, is approaching a spirit? What's kind of something they can look out for or a way to communicate, but with caution? So this is something that actually took me five years to learn. It sounds silly as heck, but the best way to approach a spirit is actually being super kind to them. I was forced into a situation where I had no choice but to be angry at a spirit. So I never learned to actually be kind to them until I had a situation with my ancestors. I'm like, how would you approach the spirit? And they're like, with kindness. And that's actually how I learned to do that. Because every spirit that I encounter now, I always approach with kindness, regardless of their past. So some of them may have committed crimes in life. Some of them maybe were more aggressive in life. But when you approach them with kindness and just with an open mind, an open heart, and just ask them, what is your story? Is that okay for you to share? Or just practice, even talking about your day, like building that friendship with that spirit is actually a really good way to ease tension right away. I'm so grateful that you said that because when I hear that and I think about that, I'm almost tearing up here. I'm like, like yeah. humans, I, I really honestly, because humans carry the spirit. This thing that Raquel communicates with is energy and the spirit that we all possess inside this vessel. I look this way, Raquel looks this way, you look the way you look, but what's inside of us is energy and it translates through a spirit and the spirit is here to learn through emotional energies and experiences. This is how we evolve, but the approach to spirits is kindness. And that's yeah. being dictated through the wisdom of other spirits. So I think it's super important for people to understand the power of kindness and the approach that you carry with you when you come and see somebody and you talk to them for who they are. And it's like, who doesn't want to be approached with kindness? We, we build up these walls to keep each other out. But it's like when you approach with kindness, it's like you can pull that wall down a little bit and just be human or see spirit to spirit. So that's really beautiful. I'm, I'm grateful for that. So I, I hope that people use that in their everyday life because communicating with spirits is also just communicating with humans. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. For example, this does happen, but it's very rare just so people know. Uh, say you were attacked by a spirit, okay? okay? Or say things are flying off the shelves. Again, very rare. So don't be scared of this. I'm not trying to fear monger anything. Spirits, I love spirits to death. I love spirits to death. <laughs> and I think it's important that you do talk about both sides because it's a reality. Some spirits are a little more aggressive because of the things they can't let go. And then we have other spirits that are here to help and guide us and teach us things. So it's important to know that both sides exist. Yeah, exactly. What I was going to say is that what could be happening to the reason why a spirit is attacking you is because they could be going through mental health stuff too. So that's the other reason why it's best to approach them with kindness, even if they attack you like that or attack your home, whatever. 
it's best to start building that friendship and it should ease things down. But it's so funny because a lot of people's paranormal experiences could be solved by just kindness. And that's actually what I did at my aunt's place as I was just approaching the spirits with kindness. She hasn't had any paranormal activity since. Unreal. That's incredible. That worked out that way. And you know, even me sitting here thinking about it, for many people, the way they've witnessed spirits is through film. The Hollywood movies, it's been romanticized or injected with an immense amount of fear because fear sells. To scare you is something they want you to believe. And in some cases, yeah, poltergeist Hollywoods have made movies out of it, like The Conjuring. It's an amazing movie because two individuals used exactly what Raquel is talking about, kindness to approach poltergeists that most people had no idea how to handle, but they did it. They got through and they figured it out. They put their lives at risk, which, I mean, I think those two people are fantastic. I'm trying to think of their names and have it come to me, but... Ed and Lorraine Warren. Thank you so much. And even as you say that, I just see two beautiful, two beautiful souls, because those two were really... Just, I look up to them uh, as humans oh, yeah. for those two individuals to find each other, to support each other through that journey. It was really cool. But yeah, it's this, the spirit world has been romanticized by film. So most of us know it through that avenue, but it's important to to see that, yeah, that kindness is the key to everything. Yeah. I'll just add to that. If you're at war with the spirit, that's what's going to happen, right? If you're kind to the spirit, it's less likely uh, going to cause a war with you. But if you're both at war, then yeah. Two negatives don't make a positive. It actually increases the negativity. You can, we all have examples of that in our life. If you're dealing with somebody at work who's aggressive and you come at them with aggression, oh, it never works out. It's (laughs) it's just not going to work. The same to happen in the spirit world, but you've got to be brave and you've got to be courageous and you've got to be patient with this kind of thing. So that's really important. Something that you said about mental health within the spirits. Talk about that a little bit. Now, when a spirit chooses not to cross over, there. now this is a little bit of the darker side of things. Either a spirit feels scared to cross over into the light because they're worried about judgment. Some of them literally are worried about going to hell. Okay. It's a bit of the darker side of things. Some of them, they're actually trying to do the right thing by guiding people. They made mistakes in life and they're like, you know what, I'm going to do better in this life and rectify my mistakes and then I'll cross over. Some spirits, they know that they did some really bad things in life and they've been told directly that you're not allowed to cross over. So what happens is when you when you cross over, you have the choice You have a choice to remove any disabilities that you may have have. Say you're friends with a spirit who hasn't crossed over, okay? What you could do is you could call on your guides and they can help that spirit move on so that they can be healed. The reason why it's a choice to remove your disabilities is because some people actually in the spirit world do not want to have their disabilities removed. For example, if you have a mental health condition, You know, for some people, it's part of who they are. So they don't want to remove that, right? Yeah, they get comfortable within their identity here on the physical plane. And that's become so normal to them that when they do pass over, they carry that with them. They take that energy with them and they're comfortable in it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. That happens here too. I mean, people start to assume that as an identity because they're not given the tools of how to communicate about what's happening inside their mind. And that's a that's a big thing with mental health is we use medication to control, not cure. And I'm not a, totally against medication within mental health because I, I do see value in it. But where I think the lack of education is coming is through guidance, through therapy and an understanding of love, guiding the human to self-worth and value through understanding. Like, And it takes an immense amount of time and dedication but that's what a community is that's what i don't understand about mental health is why we're not coming together more to have these conversations to alleviate this it just seems to be getting more and more out of control which obviously the spirit world is filling up with this kind of thing so that's interesting when you talk before about having an issue with one of the spirits you want to talk about that yeah, sure. I can. It, it will be a longer story if you're okay with that. But yeah, uh, that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So I, uh, so it's amazing out of every single spirit that I meet. And I have visitors every single day coming in, going, and out of all the spirits, it's only ever been one bad spirit. So keep that in mind because that's a good thing. Hollywood really likes to make spirits seem very scary and stuff like that. They're really not, but you can get a bad experience, which is exactly what happened to me. So when I was a little kid, I could sense things. I was always into wanting a boyfriend and stuff like that. And when I felt this presence around me, it gave me a sense of security and also it, it felt better than being alone. Okay. And when I was a kid, what happened was I thought, why not have a relationship with the spirit? Obviously, I didn't know any better at the time because this old man lived his life already. And obviously, I didn't know about pedophilia because that's what that relationship would have been. That was the, the spirit that was surrounding you that was giving you this feeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so what happened was I invited the spirit in to have sex with, and we did have that relationship and it went on until the end of high school, because that's when I would have went to college. And when I went to college, things died down because I was so focused on school and I didn't have time for that type of stuff. Right. And what happened was when I moved in with my boyfriend, he wasn't happy about that. And so he approached me and he started touching me again. And I was like, hold on a minute. I don't want to be touched. And he kept touching me inappropriately. The spirit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The spirit. Not my boyfriend. Yeah. yeah, the spirit. <laughs> I okay. probably caused confusion there. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. For that's clarifying. okay. I can, we clarified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the spirit was like, I want a relationship with you. And I said, no after you were inappropriately touching me without permission, I'm like, no. And from that point on, for the next four years, he was so mad at me. He wanted revenge. And his way of revenge was through groping my chest, through slapping me in inappropriate areas, verbal abuse. And that was my really bad experience with this. Actually, I learned from other psychic mediums that he was actually an attachment he was attached to me. So I dealt with that for the next four years of literally every two minutes, I would be touched inappropriately. And I'm not even being over dramatic. It was so stressful. That was the first time in my life that I actually said, this feels like hell. And that's interesting. Like he clearly was feeding off that energy to be yeah. provoking you every two minutes is causing you fear. I mean, they must feed off that. I mean, obviously it's duality. There must be love to, to give and fear to feed. True or? Yeah, he, I actually learned over time that he was very sadistic. So it turned him on whenever oh. he felt my fear, my anxieties, it, it's weird. <laughs> no, it's it makes sense. And I think yeah. that's really good to talk about because for some people, you're not the first one that I've met like this. When they do encounter spirits, it becomes an attachment. It's very heavy and it's overwhelming. And people begin to think that they're crazy and they yeah. can't communicate because the subject becomes very taboo to talk about. Like when you're able to communicate with, with spirits on the other side, society says you hear voices and you're crazy. Yeah. So yeah. the human starts to believe this because we don't have a community of individuals to say, hey, no, this can happen but there's ways to deal with it. So that's why this is important. And I, I appreciate you for talking about that. Can you help me understand the physical side of the sexual aspect? Because I think many people that heard that went, excuse me, is she, was she having sex with this spirit? What the shit is going on over there? And even yeah. myself, I, I, that's actually the first time I'd heard that. So I'm very curious about it, non-judgmental, but more so yeah. this takes place. Like how, yeah, they give it to me. Okay. So first off, a big warning. Do not do what I did. Never have sex with the spirit ever. Because most of the times the people, the spirits who are doing that, first of all, you can't really see them. So it's actually a form of sexual assault when they start having sex with you because they're like, oh, this person wa is wanting some intimacy. I know they can't see me. They don't know who I am really, but I'm going to join in and have some fun. Right. 
So don't ever have sex with spirits. That was a big mistake that I've made. And it always turns out bad. Every single person that I've ever heard of that has sex with a spirit, it always ends up bad. Yeah, because their appetite becomes something that you can't really fulfill. That's just my understanding of it. So there's a physical exchange. Yeah. Obviously, it's not physical. There's energy coming from the spiritual realm into the physical world. But you can feel this to that yeah. degree? Yeah, it's not. Now it's okay. <laughs> this is a funny conversation. <laughs> so it's not the same as like physical sex. It's it is different obviously, because it's just energy, but it does, it can give you an orgasm. Yeah, it's actually, sure. there's actually such a thing called sex magic, which is, I wouldn't really recommend it because it leaves you vulnerable to spirits. And after my horrible experience, trust me, guys, you don't want to go through what I went through. And if you need to learn about sex magic, please listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sex Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, interesting. All right. So I think that makes sense of that. That's wild, Raquel. You never told me that before, but that's really cool. <laughs> okay, so now you have a problem. Now he has an appetite for something that you have set boundaries for, but obviously there's no boundaries in the spiritual realm, and especially with somebody who has a sadistic past. So now you've opened the door for this gentleman. Do you see a no, let's not talk about his name. I don't want to ask that. Because it's not important. Is it important? Actually, it, it can be important, but it, it, no one knows his name. That's the thing. Because this is just a random guy who I encountered. I don't know who he is. Besides his personality, which I know very well because he was so verbally abusive. But that's about it. The, give it to me again, the conjuring couple. Oh, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine Warren, though, and, and I know it's just a Hollywood film or whatever, but I've seen it before where a name is very important to address the spirit and release it. Is this just made up fiction or how do you feel about that? You know what? At the end of the day, sometimes in witchcraft, you can write somebody's name and their date of birth. Say you're going to wish them good finances. Okay. Okay. So you use a piece of their item to go with it if you can. If not, you have their name and date of birth. So it's important in witchcraft, but there is a trick to it. What the trick is, if you know the energy very well, which if it's an attachment, you'll know what it feels like, right? Because uh, it will be with you for so long, is when you set your intentions on that piece of paper, you can write whatever name you want to give him or her. And imagine that their energy is in that name. You create what you don't know, but it, with enough yeah. intention and will from you, it can have validity over there. Yes. Yes. Wild. Crazy. The power of intention, people. I hope that people are absorbing that because that's very real. Yes. Yeah. Interesting fact. The reason why witches like to use items of other people is because it has their energy on that. So that's why they sometimes like hair, stuff like that, because it has your energy on it. And I think it's important to note when we talk about use labels, like witches are just humans yeah. that have more education surrounding the use of energy and surrounding the use of rituals and surrounding the use of articles and um, items of humans. So there is a relationship between humans and energy that can have intentions come to fruition. Very important. That's how I'm going to talk about that. We're not going to, I'm not going to use the colorful labels that everyone knows, like spells and things like this. The way I just translated it is a very human way to talk about it because we got to keep it real. But that's, that, that does happen. Because with anything, we've got light and we've got dark. You can choose which one you want to be a part of. And Raquel's talking about if you choose the darkness, it's going to be an, an intense journey for you of lessons and, and difficulties. So now that the individual has attached to you, this went on for how long? I, I can't remember quite exactly, but I think about four years is a good estimate. Do you want to talk about the state of being that this put you in? What did this do to you? So this was a really rough time. And, and it was interesting because Justin and I actually met the first time because I was crying and I had to go outside. 
something was telling me to go outside. So I did. And uh, I was just crying on the steps. And then that was the first time I saw Justin. I'm like, oh, no, he's going to notice me crying. And then he (laughs) approached me. And I forget what you said, but it was very kind. Your demeanor was very friendly and stuff like that. It was just the energy. I did see the tears because Raquel asked me afterwards. She's like, did you know I was crying? And I did see that she was in a state. But I I understand energy as well. It's something now that I've, I've come to admit because it's something that I understand. So I'm growing more into my own abilities but that day when I saw Raquel I could see that there was like just this an aura around her and it wasn't of her own aura because I knew there was light inside of her but what she had going on outside of her was dark but I knew I just had to inject some love into her yeah and I think I just said hey how are you doing today and I just remember the way you looked at me you, you were grateful for the connection but it also allowed me to see inside of you and I was like okay I need to stick with her however this looks for us over time to make sure that she evolves or, or whatever and that was just through like kindness like you said that's exactly yeah. what, I came to under, what came to learn yeah and I just wanted to share that story because I just thought it was so interesting but it was such a bad time yeah. honestly I was going through so much sexual assault from the spirit <clears throat> and I could not escape it no matter what I did and I couldn't deal with it anymore And what ended up happening, I actually decided to make plans to take my own life. And it was actually going to be last summer. That's how close it was. And the reason why it was going to be at the end of the summer is because I just wanted to enjoy the summer before I go. That was the plan. I appreciate that. And I, like I said, Raquel is one of the most authentic girls I know, but honest as well. And I really appreciate you for talking about that because... It's real and you don't have to have an attachment from a spirit to be in that sort of headspace. I think it's important to talk about that because suicidal thoughts are an attachment of an idea that we're less and other people are more or we're not worthy. And that's why I talk about in my podcast, self-worth and value and how to achieve that and how to understand it. Now, the added intensity of having an attachment forcibly put thoughts and and physical uh, energy on you in places that would be manipulating your mind throughout the day is something that I can appreciate that you went through, but look at your strength and courage. You, you here yeah. proud of you. Can you also just give a little insight as to uh, the images that were being placed just that people know that's part of it because sometimes thoughts enter people's minds and it might be that there is a, a, a spiritual presence around them, but they think they're crazy. So I think it's important to talk about that. Yeah. So this guy, Oh, I just hate him so much, Justin. (laughs) So he was a sexual predator, right? So one of the things that he thought was absolutely hilarious, and when you think about it, yeah, it's funny, but uh, when it happens 50 times, it's okay, you need to stop. He would put images of, uh, I hate talking about it because it's so embarrassing, but he would put images of men's penises. Yeah, in, in my mind. And the first time it happened, I was like, I was actually so taken aback. And even if you were a prankster and you did that, it's okay to do it once. But when you're doing it 50 times and you're seeing that flash over and over again to the other person who's sadistic, that's funny. But the other person seeing that, it actually traumatizes you because then all of a sudden you start getting OCD. I actually have symptoms of OCD now because of that, because it was so repetitive seeing those flashes that now sometimes I get scared. I'm like, and I think of that image, right? Obviously in the spiritual realm, there's an understanding they've crossed into the spiritual side. So they understand how to affect energy and things like that. Do you think that there's a a desire to put the human into a low vibrational state so it makes them easier to control or easier to manipulate? It really depends on the person, like the spirit. Some spirits are so alone. I've been trying to fathom why he did those things to me, honestly, and I couldn't figure out why. To get into that mindset is very hard because it's when you do, like some spirits are tricksters, some spirits are pranksters, right? So they'll do little things like that. But when they realize that you're in distress, and you're getting traumatized, they're like, hey, I have to be careful because there's there's actual rules in the spirit world. Are they spiritual laws, universal laws? Like, do you know anything well, about those laws? Can you talk about that? 
All I know is that there's some rules because you'll, you'll actually notice spirits who haven't crossed over, they tend to stay their distance away from people, usually, uh, unless you warm up to them and you start talking to them, like something like I would do. The laws are, certain things are forgivable, right? But you, you can't do violence to another person, okay? Because they know that they can't cross over quite yet. Like they can eventually. It's just like if they didn't serve time in jail or, or prison, I should say, uh, then they have to serve it in the afterlife, depending on what that exact crime was. Okay. If it was stealing something, they're not going to get mad over that. We're talking about very serious, severe crimes. So there is a period of repenting that must take place. And do we go through that based on our own determination of how much time we suffer even in the spiritual realm or is it like does the human alleviate itself of its own torment or how does the crossover take place if you've done incredibly bad things in the human life oh this one's tough let me tell you a story first sure before we answer that question okay I can't remember if I told you this before. My aunt, I did a psychic reading in her home. And I'm not going to do the full reading because that would just take too long. But basically, the at the end of it, I had such a hard time breathing. And I couldn't figure out why. But when I went to that room that caused me such a hard time breathing, I went back there again. And I noticed that there was a man praying to the candle. So I went down to my aunt and I asked her, like, I'm having a really hard time breathing when I go to that room, but there's an old man praying to this candle. And she's, that has to be my father. And I was like, so confused by that. I was like, why isn't he crossed over? I didn't ask her that. I just was like thinking that's weird that he didn't cross over. And what actually ended up happening is she actually revealed to me that she was she was repeatedly sexually abused by her father. And so that would explain why he was trying to pray to that candle and trying to cross over. And eventually he finally told me that, you know what, I'm going to spend my time in prison for a long time, Raquel. I don't want you to worry about it because I was so stressed. I'm like, oh, no, I don't want this guy to be anywhere near me because I've been through something like that. But he was aware of what he did in the physical realm and he put himself in jail in the spiritual world. Yeah, that's interesting because it's always been my understanding. We've been led to believe in the external world that there is a man in the sky, an old man in the sky with a beard sitting on a cloud chair, judging each one of us as we come up. But what was shown to me is that actually we judge ourselves for everything we've done. And that's the only person that can judge you. And when you get over there, you are able to see how you affected all of the lives that you connected with and in what form you connected with them. So sure, like you say, some things we do in life, they're forgivable because we learn difficult lessons in this life just to understand things. But then we repeat lessons and we know that those lessons are wrong. So we have an attachment to an idea and those are the things that you're going to be left with on the other side. So that's interesting to talk about. Cool that you saw that though, that you were able to see into that window of an individual who did do the sexual crimes uh, to another human being here and then was repenting on the other side. What a beautiful observation. It's intense, but beautiful. Yeah. and, And just to go back to your question, is that you can 100% redeem yourself in life. You're not going to be punished for making little mistakes in your life. You're not going to be punished for using drugs because that just doesn't make sense. That's not a very kind thing to do. Imagine if, say we're talking about heaven, okay? I'm just using heaven as one example. Imagine heaven just being cruel enough to say, look, we know you've been through trauma. We know you've been through a rough time but we're going to punish you because you went on drugs. That's a very cruel thing to do. They're not cruel. It's just certain things or certain lines that we just shouldn't cross. And especially when you're repeatedly raping someone, that's a problem. That's the thing with being on the straight and narrow, man. Like the straight and narrow is just an understanding of right and wrong. Actually, I don't like to even say right and wrong. It's just a knowing. It's a knowing of what can hold you back or what can set you free what causes more problems i'm curious about 
heaven and hell. Okay. What's your take on that? Okay. Now, this one is a little bit scary to talk about because there's so many different spiritual beliefs. And I'm just, I just want people to be very clear on this. Just take this with a grain of salt. Okay. This is just my personal experience and you're allowed to have your beliefs a hundred percent. Now, let's just say that it's not always just about one religion. So what that means is, this is scary to talk about, Justin. Bring it. There, there's actually different gods, goddesses, and deities out there. Okay? It's not just one. The reason why it's set up like that is because the one beautiful thing about crossing over is you'll, you'll actually realize it's one big happy family. They love different cultures. They love different beliefs. And that's part of the reason why there's so many deities out there is because it was to respect other religions and other beliefs okay i've just learned about 12 priests and 12 priestess in the spiritual realm so this is something oh, okay. that, uh, yeah i'm just coming in to learn as well so w when you say they love uh, that we're all the same would you say that we're a part of a collective consciousness that one i actually don't know okay i don't know that much okay yeah so they love cultures, they love traditions, they love souls. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. So that's an acceptable thing that takes place on the other side. Yeah. So just to add to what your question was, is so there's not, I hope I'm not scaring people when I say this, but there's not just heaven. You can have Valhalla, which is actually a, a Vikings version of heaven, right? Interesting. You can have so many different realms. And they made that to bring peace to other people, right? Like they didn't want just there to be one religion because that would just be disrespectful to other people's spirituality, right? So could we say that the spiritual world is sympathetic to belief systems here in the physical plane? Oh yeah, 100%. And I think that's because something that becomes so part of our soul, like say Vikings in their day, Valhalla was their destination. So if we were to dismantle that from the soul's understanding and lessons and learning, then it would dismantle the soul in a sense. So if Valhalla was created for that understanding of what is after, it would be more of an easy transition. I, that, that's just what's coming to me. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. And part of that was a little bit of a theory, but all I know is that there's different realms, there's different deities. That's all I know. I, as far as how long they've been around, like as far as how, how long Valhalla has been around, I don't know that information, but okay. it is a very real place. Oh, that's cool. And remember, like we are just two human beings that have experienced things in our life. Take everything that we say with discernment in yourself. And if you don't know about something, rather than judge the conversation we're having, why don't you dig into it a little deeper and learn about energies and learn about psychic abilities and learn about things that societal's basic education system doesn't teach you. I, I think it's important to have that conversation right now because the things that we are talking about are deemed crazy because yeah. there's, a, there's a, a demand for humans to not understand their power. And that is through the implement of fear. And if you cannot see that, on your day-to-day -day life that the news is injected with fear social media is injected with fear the current relationships that countries have with each other is just all fear-based and war-based that it's obvious that we need to look at that what's happening around us but things that people like raquel and i have done is we've cultivated love within ourselves so we do understand that living in this time with an immense amount of fear and chaos and destruction and devastation and division happening around us, we can still live in the centerpiece of love because we've created that in the center of our heart. And I mean that. I, I truly mean that is a place that you can live and you can be. And even through all the detriments that held back Raquel, she found that place within her through an immense amount of work because this is not easy to obtain but it is achievable and the rewards are so beautiful because it stays with you forever. And my story as well, 23 years of addiction, I was attached to an idea that I needed to hurt myself because I was so disconnected from love, but I found it and I overcame it and it cost me a lot, but 
geez, it was priceless. So I, I just really want people to understand that's what we're talking about here. And we're just two human beings. Like we just want to share about things that we've gone through in our lives because it's important to share about the things that we've gone through. These are pages in the manual of life. There is no manual of life, but there is. I have a page. Raquel has a page. All of us have a page. It's just sharing the story that brings the whole book together. And we all have a page in that story and it's really beautiful. And there's no judgment in that because everyone's on their own experience and going through their own thing. So with that, I appreciate all of that. I, I would like to talk about the non-binary subject of spirits, because when Raquel first brought this to my attention, that spirits do not want to be some spirits do not want to be identified as a he or her i was like what like how can that how can non-binary even parlay into the spiritual world but this is a, a very real thing so you want to talk a little bit about your journey with this yeah is it okay if i just say one thing to that big speech that you gave which was very beautiful by the way thank you i appreciate that absolutely okay i told my story because i want people to be aware Okay, so obviously I was in a very dark time where I was about to take my own life. What ended up happening is I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I just want people to be aware that if you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Because when I got past summer, my life just bloomed like crazy. Things got so much better. And I know that's to some people that might be cliche to say that, but things do get better. I was in that situation, right? And it actually did get better for me. I got a job in home care that was very fulfilling. I absolutely adored the seniors that I was taking care of. They were very wholesome. And then I finally got my life back on track. So I just want to send that message out there that if you're in a very dark place, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I, I yes. think it is important to hit on that as well. Like even yeah. for me, 23 years, a lot of people say to me like, man, how did you get out of it at that point? I never gave up. And that's something Raquel never did either. Neither one of us ever gave up. We didn't accept that as an option. Raquel got close. And you know what? I stood on a bridge. I did some things in my life where I was just so low and so dark that you just get so tired of the same lessons and you don't feel like you can escape it because you're missing this thing. Like you don't know what it is, but you're missing something. So you just say, wow, I can't find it. So I'm just going to end it. But just like talking to spirits that have aggression or an inability to see love is the power that we all possess. We've just forgotten where to look for it because we all have it and it's inside the heart. So it's communicating with the heart. And in the podcast episodes, this is what I talk about is how to communicate with your heart, how to let go of the fear and the emotions that don't serve you anymore. So you can make room for something new with love. And for me, I surrendered my love to Jesus. That was a key, that phrase for me with intention, because when I spoke those words, I was at the lowest point in my life in jail. I had nothing. I had no one. So I spoke those words with such intention because I just wanted out and it opened a, a door inside of me. And I'm just sharing an experience that happened with me. So maybe that'll help somebody else because the book I was reading where the gentleman had said those words, it happened and saved his life as well. Now, whatever you do with those words afterwards is up to you because we're all on our own journey. And I'm learning about my relationship between the divine feminine and the divine masculine and the light that the two of those create. That's how I've come to understand religion these days is a divine feminine, a divine masculine, and Jesus is the light. So it's a different way to look at it than the conventional way of religion that we've been taught. So it's just a different understanding and, and it's personal. So that's personal for you. So I want to talk about that. And thank you for bringing that up. So I'll just go back into that other question. Yeah. So spirits have this discernment between masculine and feminine so much so that they identify as non-binary. And Raquel and I have had a conversation about this in the past where she is currently going through an identity curiosity within herself. And yeah. I, I appreciate you so much for telling me that because it's so interesting to me to hear your perspective of how this arrived. And I'd love for you to talk about that. Yeah. When a spirit passes away or when a person passes away, 
the thing is that you actually have psychic abilities. Now, this is actually a very interesting thing because what happens is when you go to people's homes, you actually psychically feel their emotions, this living person's emotions, and you're watching them. And you might be questioning, like, why are they angry? Right. But then you realize you feel their anger and then you feel why they're angry. So you start understanding why people go through certain traumas, why people go through pain, why they are angry. And so because spirits are psychic, they pick up on people's emotions and they learn from that. And so my point is that spirits are very progressive for that reason. Now, not every spirit is progressive, but they learn these things when they cross over. There's actual guides that will actually teach them, hey, so just so you know, some people are transgender and this is why. They'll explain those things just so people can understand what is it like to be transgender so that you can empathize with that person. Some of these spirits are there teaching you things. Are you asking these questions to come into fruition or are they just there reciprocating a wealth of knowledge? Some spirits may ask the questions and they will receive the answers. Okay. For most situations, when you cross over, you're actually put to work right away. And the reason why is because they they have so much hope that they're going to help people here on earth because there's a lot of problems here on earth. There's a lot of people going through pain. So they want to change that. So when you cross over, you're put to work right away. Oh. And so the thing is that they have to teach you, they have to educate you on certain matters so that you can help people right? Say you have this opposing view against transgender people. When you cross over, spirits might be like, actually, there's nothing wrong with being transgender because of X, Y, and Z. So they're a distributor of perspective yeah, for yeah. individuals that have been taught limited beliefs and can't see things from another way. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. So I think it's important just to talk about that. That is the power that you possess as an individual who can communicate with spirits that you can receive this information and these understandings. That's yeah. important for people that are just coming into this. That's great. Okay. So you currently are experiencing identity curiosity. Yeah. How did we arrive here? When I was a child, I've always been a tomboy. And I have always preferred male clothes because they were cool. And I grew up watching Disney. It was always the man being the hero of the story. And I wanted to be the hero. It was almost like a desire to be more masculine for that reason. Because growing up watching those heroes in the movies always being male, right? And so it confused me growing up because I always wanted to be those characters. So I wore more male clothes and... That's why I'm going through that weird transition where I almost don't know which gender identity to choose because it's not that I oppose females. It's just I grew up thinking that males were always the heroes and I'm trying to challenge my thoughts. And that's actually what Lilith, she's a spirit. She helps me challenge my thoughts about the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So she'll challenge me thinking like, just so you know, a woman can be a warrior. Think about all the stuff that women go through all around the world. It can be horrendous for some of these women, right? She's, she's sharing perspective with you to have, it, to have you see it another way. Yeah. I think it's really important to talk a little bit about what you just said right there. As a child, you were programmed or given yeah. ideas through acceptable means of information, Disney films, yeah. where the hero during our generation always translated to be the man. Yeah. So an idea was planted inside of your mind that the man or the hero of a story is always going to be masculine. So you adopt this into your own story, trying to be the hero of your own story and feel like you need to become a man. That is yeah. the power of what we take in. And as a parent, I think it's very important for you to understand what your child is watching is affecting them in ways, in the subconscious ways that you may not seem harmful or detrimental to their journey. And I don't think there's anything harmful or detrimental about being gender curious, but I do see how an understanding of gender can be 
peace within, right? So your energy and time is not being focused on whether you're masculine or feminine or whether you're less or more. It's an understanding of self so that you can put that time and energy into other growth systems. But that's the power of what is happening through media. And it's really important. Like most kids these days, they got a YouTube open in front of them. What is being programmed in their mind? And we have a a big conversation surrounding gender identity right now, transgender, transsexuals, whatever it may be. To me, I just be yourself. But it's really cool that Raquel is able to share about, you know, what's happening in her life, because this is a really different perspective. The conversations that media is having surrounding transgender and identity curiosities is not this one, but I wonder how common this is for the youth to be separating or being confused about being a male and female. What is their reasoning behind it? Because we've just heard a reason right here as to why she's curious. Interesting that you're working as well with spirits that are helping you see perspectives of the divine masculine, divine feminine that we carry and other spirits that are non-binary so you're actually getting education from both sides yeah yeah that's the really cool thing about being a medium is you get to hear all their knowledge that they've learned in the afterlife like i've said they've grown to be psychic they've learned from people's feelings and mistakes and they watch people make mistakes so they know these they become wise right And like with the divine masculine and divine feminine, my my understanding, I'll I'll talk about my own experience because that's what we do here on on Real Talk for an Unreal World is just share from (laughs) our experiences. But for me, I know I have a strong divine feminine. I, I know it inside of me. But just recently, I was on a sound healing journey. I've got a podcast episode coming up in a couple of weeks. Her name's Ada Andromeda, and she offers a sound healing journey and guides you within and it's an integration uh, of self and I just recently just a couple nights ago went on this journey and I met the divine masculine from my past life and we were able to integrate and it was such a beautiful powerful moment this podcast episode will be coming up in a few weeks and I'm going to talk about that story I'm going to talk about what happened to me but what an incredible thing to happen because I know I've always been a sensitive child And being sensitive doesn't have to come from the divine feminine. It's just my understanding of where it comes from. Empathy, compassion, communication, patience, all comes from my divine feminine. My divine masculine is fire, courage, bravery, risk-taking. That's how I see my divine masculine. So I integrated the both of them recently where I'm able to view from the whole perspective. So now when I approach with my fire side, my passionate and compassionate side is stepping up at the same time so however that translates it's just two halves of one whole and i'm, I'm very grateful for that so i don't think that we should have conversations or surrounding judgment of another individual i think that we offer perspectives around gender curiosities to really see what the root problem or not problem but like where does the disassociation come from where is the confusion and how can we help an individual to see from multiple perspectives so that they can come to their own understanding to know who they are. Yeah. Have you found your place? Actually, no, I have not. It's actually a very, it's a little bit of a longer journey than I anticipated, but I'm slowly getting there because I see women in a different perspective than what I did when I was a kid. And it wasn't like a bad perspective it was just males were the heroes the females were always the princess but as Lilith has challenged my my old thoughts it made me more comfortable associating with women I don't think I can say for sure in in my journey that I would I, I just don't think I would ever associate with masculine because I've I think part of it is, this is just honesty. I think I just had such a bad experience with that one male spirit that I just, I know there's good men out there, but it's just so hard when for four or five years, you go through that constant control from a male spirit. And so it changes your views on not men in general, but just, I don't know. It just, there's that anger because you associate meanness with males, right? I I don't know how to explain it. It's just... Yeah, you're struggling to trust 
because in yeah. trust is a big one and you're struggling with acceptance and that's okay. And that's very common and there's no right or wrong. There's no judgment because whatever a human is going through is what they're going through. That's the conversation we got to have. And it's beautiful for you to have spoke about that. You and I have known each other for three years. And I'm just going to say when I met Raquel, she was in a space and who she is today is just two totally different people. She has come so far. She's put so much work in and I've seen the rewards of her efforts and, and her discipline that she's put into her life to take back her power. And talking about power, one of the things that we all possess is a power and my greatest power. And I believe all of our greatest power comes from our truth, which is from our heart chakra, from our heart center. That's where our truth comes from. So when you're in the world and you're looking to understand the divine masculine through the physical presence of a man, I would encourage you to try and have conversations with, with more men just to gain a practice of speaking your truth. So no matter how little of a conversation that is with men, whether you're in the grocery store or gas station, whatever it may be, it just offer some sort of sentiment or just some surface level conversation just to get better at speaking your truth to men so you can understand and learn that you're right. The attachment is not the end all be all of the divine masculine. There's many other men out there like me and who am I? I'm just a human, but like at, at the end of the day, it's the energy that I carry. And I would really want you to build that relationship with the divine masculine again, so that you can trust and you can start to adopt that into your soul again and go on the journey of learning because that's one thing that's limiting you, but it's not limiting you. It's just one of the things you came here to learn. Yeah, I think what you said was actually really good advice in terms of healing. I think trust is something that has to be regained after you were taken advantage of as a child. You were yeah. taken advantage of for years, right? So you, you lose that trust, obviously. So I think what you said is actually really powerful advice for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. It just came to me when we were talking about this. But again, I always go from the truth. I I always go from the heart and, and I just see things like that. And as well, you can try different hats on, right? Like when you're talking to a man, you can visualize yourself from the divine feminine. And that's another really good thing. Like how I spoke about my divine feminine and my divine masculine, how my understanding of it is. It's good to understand that within yourself. Like, what is your divine feminine? What does your divine feminine represent for you? And, and I mean that you, for you, Raquel. Those yeah. are great ways to see it physically so that the mind and the heart can absorb it at the same time and go, okay, like, I, I can see that when I'm speaking from this perspective, I'm going to allow that to be this side of me. Now, my bravery and courage also comes from my divine feminine because it's two halves of one whole. So I look at it like the yin and yang. They mix, they go together. That's what makes me whole. And the yin yang is a really powerful symbol in my life because it's just the light and the darkness, the duality of everything. I just find so much peace in that, in its simplistic form that that's how we work together. We have to have one with the others. Yeah, it's a good way to really see yourself from that perspective because whatever you're wearing on the outside or however you translate yourself in the physical world through your artistic expression of clothing or whatever who are we to judge people on that and a lot of people are they see a man wearing a skirt and they're like look at this guy and it's like what are you looking at like why are you judging him what's going on inside of you or raquel if she feels comfortable wearing uh, men's clothing like who cares like I i'd rather know you from within and understand you read some of the pages in your story yeah, exactly. So that's really cool. I appreciate you talking about that because there's a lot of kids these days that uh, are confused and there's a lot of parents that are confused and they're enabling a confusion without conversation. And I believe it's really important to have a level of communication with your children so that you can guide them and encourage them. You, you're you not out there with a pitchfork trying to attack anybody who comes near them. That's not what this is. We're here to open up safe spaces for conversations, but get to the root of what is going on. If we just allow something to be surface level all the time, then there's going to be no transition. We have to have conversations surrounding growth so that an individual can go from A to B and then we can continue on the journey. But if somebody gets stuck in gender confusion, like that's going to limit them from what they're here to learn. Like maybe that is the lesson, but there's so many lessons that we come to learn. So we've got to really be 
accountable for that, I think. Yeah. Raquel's got a YouTube channel and it's super authentic and it offers more information into the communication of spirits and some of the conversations she has, which is super cool. I love your <laughs> YouTube channel. I think it's great because it's authentic and she's sharing about something that you don't learn in school. So how do people find that? Yeah. So for YouTube, you can find me by typing the alley cat paranormal and you should hopefully find my YouTube channel. And the other way to find me is if you want to contact me, I'm actually an admin of this Facebook group. It's called the altar of darkness. And if you want to reach out to me for any reason, then you can search through that Facebook group and find me. So that might be the easiest way. Wonderful. Something I want to close with here, because we've talked about some of the positives of this. Let's talk about the cautions of messing around with darkness. Okay. I want you to, I, cause man, this is things that people play with and they don't yeah. know what they're playing with. This is real. This is so real if you mess with this stuff. And I want you just to give people a little bit of education of what they could go through if they do. Yeah. So basically, are you talking about curses and hexes? Like just okay. educate people on what they should know messing around with the darkness. You know more about this than me. So th there's a good and a bad side to this. So say there's somebody innocent, okay? And you decide to curse or hex them because they did something minor to you. Say they gossiped about you or whatever. Now, sometimes magic does win and the effects does happen to the person. But oftentimes, if it's an innocent person that does not deserve the certain punishment that you're giving through that magic then it backfires on you and you actually get your own spell. So if you, that actually does happen. It does backfire. I've heard of that before. I just want to share one thing. I was with the girl and I put her through a very difficult time. It was yeah. not easy to be with me because I was a, a full-blown drug addict who didn't love himself, who didn't understand himself, but she loved me. And I think she loved me <laughs> and it was very detrimental for her. So it was very difficult for her to, for her to be with me. She came into her abilities towards the end of our relationship. And maybe it was through all the turmoil that pushed her to come to this, but she yeah. had gifts as well. And she was messing around with some of this witchcraft, uh, darker side of things. And I know that she, I read this in a chat. I was, I was still attached to her after we'd broken up and I was trying to find like everything and anything I could about her. And I found in one of these chats that she was in that she said that there was a question asked, have you ever done a hex or a spell? And she had said that I'd only done one once and he deserved every bit of it. But the interesting oh. thing about that was, and I know it was me, but the yeah. interesting thing about that was, is I know it never worked. And I always knew that if you have to be super careful with that, because if an individual has enough of a barrier or there was a fraction of a second where your intention broke and you didn't want to harm that individual, you will carry what you put out because that is for you now because the intention was broken. And I knew that happened to her. Now, I don't know. We have no communication. I have not spoken to her since uh, we have broken up. And I would want nothing but the best for her because I'm extremely grateful for her taking care of our child and just being a wonderful human being. But good Lord, I, I'm always curious about those couple of years after that taking place. Like, did something happen to her? So I appreciate you for saying that. Now, you asked me this question and you were wondering, like, it's all curses and hexing bad or something along the lines of that. Yeah, like you, you see this and let's be real, everyone's been getting these comments from Africa where somebody can put a hex on anyone or yeah. you get rid of a relationship or whatever it may be. People are seeing this these days. So what's the deal with that? Now, I think our beliefs are a little bit different here and that's okay. 100% okay. We're friends. But I... The thing is that I'm not 100% opposed to that. I'm not. The reason why is because- Raquel's a dark witch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The reason why is I'm not saying- <sighs> There's just certain people that are so- You know, we're talking about very evil people, like that spirit that molested me when I was a child. I agree that a curse and a hex can be put on that person just because- First of all, what if they do it again and they keep getting away with it? 
what if instead they get caught one time? It, it can be a very peaceful thing to do, believe it or not. Um, and that's why I, I actually have a great appreciation for curses and hexes. As weird as that sounds, it's just it can actually bring peace and justice in people. But we're not talking about minor things like gossip or petty things like that. This is for more serious stuff. Right. No. And uh, your understanding is a hundred percent valid. Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer. It's everyone's understanding. I'll yeah. offer another perspective though, about the attachment, okay. because yeah. I feel like without the curse and the hex that he was a catalyst in your evolution. So that trauma, I know how difficult it was for you because yeah. you and I've had many conversations about this. It's not easy. Trauma is never easy. And the struggle is not easy, but yeah. I believe that because you went through that, he pushed you into an understanding and a strength of self that you cultivated on your own. Now, if we would have chosen the hex and the curse, yes, that probably would have went away. But with what growth of the soul do we achieve? Yeah, that's actually a very beautiful way of looking at it. I've never thought of it that way because I'm so angry at the spirit, right? Which makes sense, right? Gratitude. Gratitude, Raquel. Spirits are actually, interestingly enough, telling me right now as we speak, they're like, that's actually something we wanted to say to you, but we know how sensitive the topic was for you because he was a catalyst for my growth. I'm amazed at how far I've come. And it, and if it, it, the weird thing is, if the sexual assault did not happen, I wouldn't be where I am today. Like, I'm not saying like I wouldn't be alive. I'm just saying like the amount of growth just wouldn't be there. You know what I'm saying? I 100% know what you're saying because even the traumatic experiences that happened to me in my life, I often say to people, if I had to come back and do this life again in the same manner, I would because it brought me to my present moment with my understanding and awareness of self. Trauma is education, but we've only been taught to get caught up in the emotional detriments of not being able to process the emotion to see the education. And that's where perspective is so valuable. And that's why I love conversations like this, because we all have a page, right, of the manual or the story or a perspective and to share with each other. That's how we help each other grow. And I saw those detriments within my life through the trauma that I was able to see from another angle and see the beauty in it. And that's why when I heard you just say all that, I was like, okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with her right now because I'm seeing it as a beautiful thing. I know how hard it was. And I know, especially like sexual assault or sexual abuse, this is something taboo to ever say, like, how could this be something that could be beneficial to somebody's life? Wherever there's a negative, we have a positive, regardless. That is duality. That is the way it all works. So it's just a matter of perspective to A, be stuck in the negative, which of course, sexual abuse is completely unacceptable, right? We know no human should even have to learn through those measures. I'm not saying that at all because it's unacceptable, but in reality, it happens. So we can't ignore that conversation. We've got to have that conversation. So, okay, we understand that this human went through this. Now this human is a knower of sexual abuse. So where is the positive in that? You've gone through it. So you have education to share with another individual about the feelings, the emotions, the experiences that you went through that may help them in their life. That's what makes our experiences beautiful, no matter the traumatic experience or level that we face. That is what life is. And I know that it is difficult for some of us. And some of that is what we've done in our past lives. We'll have podcast episodes about past lives in the future so we can get gain a, more of an understanding of how that represents today in our physical life or in the present moment. But it's all synchronized and it's all very beautiful, but we have a lack of education. So it's wonderful to share and have these conversations. And I appreciate you so much for today. This was a fantastic conversation. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm very much enjoyed doing the podcast with you. It was actually a lot of fun. So thank you so much for having me.
Yeah, Yo, you killed it too. I'm gonna tell you that you were super zen. I'm over here reading your energy, and you dropped into it real quick. And I was like, "Oh, Raquel, you here?" Because I know when you do have the camera on you and stuff like that, especially with both of our journeys, it's like now we're sitting in front of cameras and we're having conversations. Like, yeah. what, what is this? But you did great, so I appreciate you. And the best part about this is Raquel is going to be a reoccurring guest on here because I absolutely love her as a human being. She is fantastic, and the progression of a journey is so beautiful because she's going through a lot in her life as we all are but authenticity is the greatest energy that we all are able to connect with so it's cool to see your evolution and bring you back on have cool conversations about where you're at in life yeah thank you for allowing me a space to share all that and you're okay with anyone reaching out to you with questions are you cool with oh that? yeah yeah okay. absolutely very cool. So there's a human that we can connect with that has beautiful understandings about the things she's gone through, as well as myself. My social media is Real Talk for an Unreal World. That's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. My Twitter is Real Talk, the number four Unreal. I just put up little quotes and things I think about for throughout the day. And my email is Real Talk for an Unreal World, gmail.com. You can email me as well with any kind of questions you got going on. Maybe you want to be a podcast guest. Maybe you got a cool story. Just email me or I can carry some weight for you. I've got big shoulders and I've been through shit. So I've learned how to do that. Thank <laughs> you so much, Raquel, for being here. And thank you so much for everyone listening to this. This is so cool. I appreciate everyone. I just have so much love. Like really, I do for everyone. And and I really just am here to try and grow that within everyone and, and see things from a non-judgmental perspective. Thank you, Raquel. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. Okay, sounds good. Bye. Bye.